St. Patrick's Day tool time. And our salute to everything Irish that once was a lad from Nantucket. Tim. <laughs> First off, many thanks to Seamus O'Connor for showing his beautiful antique Waterford crystal collection. It's priceless. Yeah. And somewhat fragile. Sorry, Seamus. Hey, Seamus. You knew this was a possibility when you came on the show. A little later on in the show, we're going to repaint this little table, this beautiful Irish coffee table. And I'm going to use Kelly Green. And I'm going to finish tatting this lovely Irish lace. Very McManly, Al. Before we get to that, we have some very special guests for you. That's right. Nobody knows how to celebrate St. Patrick's Day like the working man. And we're talking about the working men from Bay City. That's right. Let's give a warm tool time. Welcome to the boys from k and Rock, Pete and Dwayne. Yeah. Right. It's great to have you guys here. Always great to be here, Timmy. <laughs> I guess you guys really know how to party on St. Patty's Day. That's right. It's a big holiday up at k &B. It's right up there with Christmas and Friday. <laughs> well, tell me this. Since St. Patty's falls on a Tuesday, how do you find time to celebrate? It is a challenging dilemma, but being skilled craftspersons, we've designed our own accouterments for just such a situation. <laughs> well, your accouterments look suspiciously like just a green toolbox. Well, to the untrained eye, Tim, open her up. Oh, voila, a traditional Irish feast. Look at that, corned beef and cabbage, huh? Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Isn't that great? And look down in this compartment, instead of your nails and screws, you got your spuds and stews, huh? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Whoa, it's oh. a little oily there. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's where we usually keep the WD-40. <laughs> well, so much for the food portion of our St. Patty's Day celebration. Now, guys, why don't you tell the audience why you really came down here? Well, Tim, during breaks up on the high steel, we like to sing traditional Irish folk songs. Mm -hmm. I love Irish music. It's magically delicious. <laughs> and I like it, too. <laughs> well, perhaps, then, we should regale you with one of our most captivating numbers entitled Mountain Dew. Go ahead. <laughs> How do you like it, Jack, please? All right. Here you go, Letty. Uh, thank you, Lassie. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys from K&B. <laughs> Bulbs, all right. What is that? It's my bulb blaster. Is this really necessary? Probably not, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now stand up. All right. Okay, stand back. <laughs> it's tulip time in Beijing. Look at that. Yeah, top of the morning to you, Taylor Tusum. Morning. Hi, Jill, I wanted to bring you a basket of St. Patrick's Day goodies before I leave. Oh, thank you. What a nice thing to do. Where are you going? I'm spending three days with my good friend Sean McCormick in Dublin. You're going to Ireland for just three days? Dublin, Ohio. Well, then three days will be plenty, won't it? 
You know, it's very good timing since my house is going to be filled with nerve gas. <laughs> I thought he said nervous. So did I. Yeah. Well, I did. I did. I'm trying to get rid of the bats in my, my attic. You know, I tried every other way, but alas, it comes down to gas. Yeah. It always does. It always does. <laughs> well, thank you again for these, and have a good time. You know, Jill, there's something that is bothering me. My niece still hasn't got a definite place to stay. Well, that's weird. I thought you had tons of friends. Oh, well, yes, but have you met them? They're wild. They're irresponsible. I know it's a big favor to ask, but could Willow maybe stay with you for about three days? I would love that. In fact, I'd like to trade her for Tim. Hi. Hey, Will. Hello. Uncle Wilson, the guy with the nerve gas is here, uh, and I may have a lead on a place to stay. Tim and I were just talking. We'd like you to stay with us. Oh, uh, I wouldn't want to put anybody out. We wouldn't be putting anybody out. We'll just have the boys double up. If that does work, she'll now double. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, I'd be happy to stay. Provided your husband puts down his weapon. <laughs> I have a constitutional right to bear these bolts. <laughs> I'll get my stuff. I'll be right back. Great. Hey, hey. Well, hi-ho, Nick. What's that Nick the exterminator? Nick the nerve gas guy. What's shaking? His entire body. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for making us dinner. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. Making dinner is fun when you get to cook for people you like. <laughs> Maybe that's been my problem all along. I love this Moroccan food you get to eat with your finger. How's that different from the way you normally eat? He lifts his fingers a lot more. <laughs> I love the squad. Mm. No kidding, you've practically eaten the entire flock. <laughs> I appreciate your asking me to stay with you. And tomorrow, if anyone needs a massage, I brought my table. Oh, I'll be right. I'll go. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, hey. Don't be rude. Me first. <laughs> I guess we should start to clean up. I love her. When she's around, these boys start acting like, um, what is it, human? Mm -hmm. I really like having another woman in the house. Yeah, it's okay for you, but I want another woman in the house. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, man, look at the time. You know what? I gotta call a cab. Oh, really? Where are you going? I'm meeting some friends at a club. Cool. Yeah, any idea what time you're gonna get back? Mm, probably you're on midnight. Midnight? You shouldn't be out looking for a cab that late. We should lend her one of our cars. Too bad they all have flats. <laughs> here, here. Take one. Take my hand with you. That is really great. Thanks a lot, Jill. Hi, guys. Bye. Be careful. Um, keep a close eye on that oil gauge. Two centimeters off the left means you need some oil. Try to find an English mechanic if you can. <laughs> Okay, Mom, Dad, you guys can take it from here. <laughs> oh, man, they are such show-offs. The girl leaves, they bail. Well, we have to rest up for our massages tomorrow. <laughs> Hold on a second, guys. Finish those dishes, or Daddy will give you a massage with the old bull blaster. <laughs> you still doing up? It's 2 o'clock. You lost the night back. I'm worried. What are you doing up? That Moroccan food is a bit spicy. That Marrakesh Express has been running all night. I wonder if there's something going on with Willow. You know, I've seen girls like her in counseling. Because they don't have a strong parental role model, they like direction, they get some lost and stay that way for the rest of their lives. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you came up with that theory based on the fact she's two hours late? No, I came up with that theory the minute I met her. Just never had the opportunity to obsess about it. Honey, don't do this. First thing, she's not our daughter. She's 26 years old. Second of all, she's been living like this her whole life, and I think she's doing pretty well at it. Have you ever seen people who seem fine on the outside, but inside they're racked with pain? <laughs> oh, you are singing to the choir. Hi, Tim. Hi, Jill. Hey, Willow. Oh, hi. You weren't waiting up for me, were you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a real night owl, you know. I love the nightlife. I love to boogie. <laughs> you know, I have other issues. What was it like? Did you have fun at the club? It was wild. The bouncer wouldn't let my friend Dirk in because he didn't like his pants. And I tell Dirk, if he doesn't like your pants, take them off. So he takes them off. Then the other guys start taking off their pants and they all get in the club. Where do we keep the barium? Tim put a cork in it. Well, there's an idea. Where do we keep the corks? Upstairs in the attic. Night, Willem. Night, Tim. <laughs> Well, it's 2 o'clock. Who would be calling at this hour? That's probably for me. Hi. How is it going, Dirk? Sure. Yeah, 
Christmas either. Bye. Well, I am off. Where are you going? Out to breakfast with Dirk. You sure it's safe to go out at this hour? Yeah, I, well, I, I appreciate your concern, Jill, but I'll be fine. I'm, I'm not a kid. Oh, no, it's not a matter of how old you are. I mean, I wouldn't go out this late. Well, you also wouldn't get a bunch of men to take off their pants. <laughs> <laughs> not now, but when I retire, I'll need a hobby. Bye. 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 Honey, on your way up, grab the stick matches. <laughs> noon and Willow's not back. This is getting serious. You're right. That heel is going to need some oil. <laughs> when you forget about the car. Okay, let's get this straight. After she got home, she went out for breakfast with that guy, Dirk. Dirk was a guy that she... Took off his pants right. at the club. Ought to be young again. <laughs> I'm just I'm concerned. I mean, what if something bad has happened? Nothing to bad happened to her. Come on. We'll just tell her if she wants to go out tonight and stay out all night, give us a call. I'll let her use my cell phone. Hello. Hello, Dirk. We're just talking about you. A little drafty today, are we? <laughs> well, why would Willow be here? Really? Well, yeah, if she gets back, I'll have her call you. Bye. What did he say? He said uh, that Willow never showed up. He's a little worried about it, too. He should have gotten his phone number, huh? Oh, God. Wilson asked us to look after Willow after one night she's missing. Wait, you lost Wilson's niece? <laughs> we didn't lose her. We just don't know where to find her. <laughs> oh, my God, we've lost Wilson's niece. <laughs> okay, you guys think you have any idea where Willow is? Maybe she's at a friend's house. Could be working. Maybe she fell in a big hole and can't get out. <laughs> It can happen. <laughs> Look, first things first. We gotta find that guy Dirk's phone number. How are we gonna do that? Well, maybe she has an address book. She's been staying in Brad's room. We should check there. Or over at Wilson's. That Wilson's house is being bombed with nerve gas. Who's gonna go in there? Take off the mask. What a rush! Walking through dark, poison-filled hallways. A mission where it could cost me my life! It was unbelievable! It was great! Dad, are you sure that mask is completely leak-proof? <laughs> Who said that? Well, okay, if she turns up, you know where to call. Thanks, bye. All right, I've checked the police, the emergency rooms, and the hospital. Did you find you found the address book? Better yet, her day planner. Day minder. Well, look at this. There's names and addresses on this stuff. There's got to be something that'll help us find her. Hey, look. It's a receipt from a place called Just Jam and Jelly. <laughs> on the 15th, she went to a body piercing parlor. Hey, that's pretty cool. Three more visits and she gets a free tongue stud. <laughs> look at this. This picture's of Willa taking to one of those photo booths. You guys could take these, you know, go to these places, find out if anybody's seen her. That's a great idea. I'll go with you, Mark. Randy, you go with Brad. Here, now, I'll just stay here and, and, and see if she calls. Look at this. A lot of money at great value hardware. You go to the hardware store. You go to the body piercing parlor. <laughs> oh, man. Well, call me if she turns up, okay? Thanks. Hi, did you find out anything? Yeah. Found out even though the Healy is an English car, I still miss it. <laughs> no. Oh, did you find anything about Willow? Uh, yes, I stopped by Just Herbs, and it seems like Willow has a thing for ginkgo biloba. <laughs> uh, according to her psychic, Janeth. In a past life, Willow was Vincent Van Gogh. So in other words, you found out nothing. No, oh, I found out in a past life, I was Mary Queen of Scots. <laughs> right, Brad and Randy called. They don't know anything either. Let's think. Assuming that Willow is okay, what would motivate her to stay out all night and not call? She wants attention. She's acting out. All of this is just a cry for help. Maybe there's another explanation. She's really inconsiderate. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that simple. Sure it is. Takes a car all night doesn't even bother calling us? What's that about? I'm sticking with the big hole theory. <laughs> well, what are you suggesting? Do you think we should stop looking for her? The boys and I, we've been spending all day looking for her. She's nowhere. We haven't checked the clubs. <sighs> We're going clubbing? All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't go to the clubs. You're not old enough. Well, what am I supposed to do? Find a big hole and wait till you're 21. <laughs> Another club. I've been up stamps in my hand to mail myself to Caracas. <laughs> Let's just try this one last place and then we'll go home. I'm not waiting another of these lines. Just tell them it's an emergency. Okay. Get us in. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, this is an emergency. You have to let us in. We're searching for a missing person. Her name is Willow. She's about 5'3". She has reddish, blondish, brownish hair. She says like this. Hi. Oh, just go in. Just go in. Thanks. So. Oh, wait, not you. I'm with her. Yeah, but she's cool. Oh. <laughs> Stay here, I'll be right back. Hold on a second, honey. Hold on. Apparently, you know, I'm Tim the Tool Man Taylor. And I'm Lance. I hate your show, Smith. Excuse me. Um, do you know a girl named Willow Wilson? Oh, yeah, Willow. Hey, too bad what happened to her. Oh, my God, what happened? Well, her uncle left town and she had to crash with this really straight suburban family. <laughs> uh, you two. Come on in. What kind of line is this? I was here before they were. This isn't a line. Bouncer picks who gets to go in. You know, I think tonight's my lucky night. <laughs> it's gonna happen for you, you know. I, I can feel it. What a loser. So, Lance, uh, you like football? Yeah. I've got some connections with the owner of the Lions, you know. <laughs> I played for the Lions. Yeah? They cut me. Yeah, look what happened to them. <laughs> anyway. Swing time! Say good looking, let's dance! Do you know Willow Wilson? You mean, hi! Yeah, yes, that's her! Yeah, poor kid. Why? Oh, because she had to stay with that uh, boring suburban street thing. No, she drives this really ugly old car. Huh. Willow! Jill! Uh, thank you for the dance. Here, take her. I've been looking all over town for you. Why? Well, because you didn't come home, and then Dirk called and said you didn't come and meet him. Oh, yeah, well, on the way, I met some people, and we got to talking, and next thing I knew, I was bowling with drag queens. <laughs> well, why didn't you call? I didn't know you liked to bowl. <laughs> what can I say? I'm not a phone person, you know? You gotta stop what you're doing and find change and dial all those numbers. Do so you act like this when you're at Wilson's? What's wrong with the way I'm acting? You're not being considerate of other people's feelings. You're not taking responsibility for your actions. You're 26 years old, Willa. It's time to grow up. Hey, lighten up. <laughs> You're not my mother. I know, I know. Look, I, I'm talking to you as your friend. Remember you said that you wanted to move here because you wanted to be around people who cared about you? Well, we care about you. So if you disappear and don't check in, that affects people. I'm sorry. I mean, I know Uncle Wilson is a worrier. I didn't realize that you guys would be worried, too. Wilson is like family to us. That makes you family. That means a lot to me. And I never really had a family. At least, not one who cared enough to go out looking for me. Well, you have that now. And that means you gotta learn to pick up a phone, okay? <laughs> I will. All right. Thanks, Jill. You're pretty cool. <laughs> well, they score than ten. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you. Not you. Oh. Yeah. Who's the loser now? <laughs> Who's the loser now? <laughs> niece and neighborette. Hi! So my backs are gone and I see my niece is still in one piece. Everything looked great. How was your trip, Uncle Wilson? You know, I was sick the entire time. I ate a piece of green cheese thinking it was for St. Patrick's Day. Actually, it was just bad cheese. <laughs> Tim had some stomach trouble, too. Mm, good. It was my Moroccan cooking. He must be squab intolerant. <laughs> Oh, and also, we went to this club, and he got rejected there, and he's been obsessed with trying to get in there ever since. Hey, Wilson. <laughs> what? What do you think? I think some of that nerve gas might have leaked onto your side of the fence.
Je veux que tu mettes une bonne voiture à toi qui avec ta paix d'histoire avec un bel casse. Et vous gardez bien la vie que ça me tient à la main. Welcome back to our St. Patrick's Day tool time. And our salute to everything Irish that once was a lad from Nantucket. Tim. <laughs> First off, many thanks to Seamus O'Connor for showing his beautiful antique Waterford crystal collection. It's priceless. Yeah. And somewhat fragile. Sorry, Seamus. Hey, Seamus. You knew this was a possibility when you came on the show. A little later on in the show, we're going to repaint this little table, this beautiful Irish coffee table. And I'm going to use Kelly Green. And I'm going to finish tatting this lovely Irish lace. Very McManley, Al. Before we get to that, we have some very special guests for you. That's right. Nobody knows how to celebrate St. Patrick's Day like the working man. And we're talking about the working men from Bay City. That's right. Let's give a warm tool time. Welcome to the boys from k and Rock, Pete and Dwayne. Yeah. Right. It's great to have you guys here. Always great to be here, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you guys really know how to party on St. Patty's Day. That's right. It's a big holiday up at k &B. It's right up there with Christmas and Friday. <laughs> well, tell me this. Since St. Patty's falls on a Tuesday, how do you find time to celebrate? It is a challenging dilemma, but being skilled craftspersons, we've designed our own accouterments for just such a situation. <laughs> well, your accouterments look suspiciously like just a green toolbox. Well, to the untrained eye, Tim, open her up. Oh, voila, a traditional Irish feast. Look at that, corned beef and cabbage, huh? Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Isn't that great? And look down in this compartment, instead of your nails and screws, you got your spuds and stews, huh? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Whoa, it's oh. a little oily there. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's where we usually keep the WD-40. <laughs> well, so much for the food portion of our St. Patty's Day celebration. Now, guys, why don't you tell the audience why you really came down here? Well, Tim, during breaks up on the high steel, we like to sing traditional Irish folk songs. Mm -hmm. I love Irish music. It's magically delicious. <laughs> and I like it, too. <laughs> well, perhaps, then, we should regale you with one of our most captivating numbers entitled Mountain Dew. Go ahead. <laughs> How do you like it, try, please? All right. Here you go, Letty. Uh, thank you, Lassie. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys from K&B. <laughs> Bulbs, all right. What is that? 
It's my bulb blaster. Mm, is this really necessary? Probably not, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Now stand up. All right. Okay. Stand back. <laughs> it's tulip time in Beijing. Look at that. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, Taylor Toosome. Morning. Hi, Jill, I wanted to bring you a basket of St. Patrick's Day goodies before I leave. Oh, thank you. What a nice thing to do. Where are you going? I'm spending three days with my good friend, Sean McCormick in Dublin. You're going to Ireland for just three days? Dublin, Ohio. And then three days will be plenty, won't it? <laughs> no, it's very good timing since my house is going to be filled with nerve gas. <laughs> I thought he said nervous. So did I. Mm. Well, I did. I did. I'm trying to get rid of the bats in my, my attic. You know, I tried every other way, but alas, it comes down to gas. It always does. It always does. <laughs> well, thank you again for these, and have a good time. You know, Jill, there's something that is bothering me. My niece still hasn't got a definite place to stay. Well, that's weird. I thought you had tons of friends. Oh, well, yes, but have you met them? They're wild. They're irresponsible. I know it's a big favor to ask, but could Willow maybe stay with you for about three days? I would love that. In fact, I'd like to trade her for Tim. Hi. Hey, Will. Hey, uh, Uncle Wilson, the guy with the nerve gas is here, uh, and I may have a lead on a place to stay. Tim and I were just talking. We'd like you to stay with us. Oh, uh, I wouldn't want to put anybody out. We wouldn't be putting anybody out. We'll just have the boys double up. If that does work, Jill, I'll double. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, I'd be happy to stay. Provided your husband puts down his weapon. <laughs> I have a constitutional right to bear these bolts. <laughs> Welcome back to our St. Patrick's Day tool time. And our salute to everything Irish. There once was a lad from Nantucket, Tim. <laughs> First off, many thanks to Seamus O'Connor for showing his beautiful antique Waterford crystal collection. It's priceless. Yeah. And somewhat fragile. Sorry, Seamus. Hey, Seamus. You knew this was a possibility when you came on the show. A little later on in the show, we're going to repaint this little table, this beautiful Irish coffee table. And I'm going to use Kelly Green. And I'm going to finish tatting this lovely Irish lace. Very McManley, Al. <laughs> Before we get to that, we have some very special guests for you. That's right. Nobody knows how to celebrate St. Patrick's Day like the working man. And we're talking about the working men from Bay City. That's right. Let's give a warm tool time. Welcome for the boys from KB Rock, Pete and Dwayne. Yeah. Right. It's great to have you guys here. Always great to be here, Timmy. <laughs> I guess you guys really know how to party on St. Patty's Day. That's you? right. It's a big holiday up at KB. It's right up there with Christmas and Friday. <laughs> Well, tell me this, since St. Patty's falls on a Tuesday, how do you find time to celebrate? It is a challenging dilemma, but being skilled craftspersons, we've designed our own accouterments for just such a situation. <laughs> well, your accouterments look suspiciously like just a green toolbox. Well, to the untrained eye, Tim, open her up. Oh, voila, a traditional Irish feast. Look at that, corned beef and cabbage, huh? Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Isn't that great? And look down in this compartment, instead of your nails and screws, you got your spuds and stews, huh? Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, it's oh. a little oily there. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's where we usually keep the WD-40. <laughs> well, so much for the food portion of our St. Patty's Day celebration. Now, guys, why don't you tell the audience why you really came down here? Well, Tim, during breaks up on the high steel, we like to sing traditional Irish folk songs. Mm -hmm. I love Irish music. It's magically delicious. <laughs> and I like it, too. <laughs> well, perhaps, then, we should regale you with one of our most captivating numbers entitled Mountain Dew. Go ahead. <laughs> How do you try, please? All right. Here you go, laddie. Uh, thank you, lassie. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys from K&B. <laughs>
and Al Green. Bulbs, all right. What is that? It's my bulb blaster. Is this really necessary? Probably not, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now stand up. All right. Okay, stand back. <laughs> it's tulip time in Beijing. Look at that. Well, top of the morning to you, Taylor Tusum. Morning. Hi, Wilson. Jill, I wanted to bring you a basket of St. Patrick's Day goodies before I leave. Oh, thank you. What a nice thing to do. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm spending three days with my good friend, Sean McCormick in Dublin. You're going to Ireland for just three days? Dublin, Ohio. And then three days will be plenty, won't it? <laughs> no, it's very good timing since my house is going to be filled with nerve gas. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said nerve gas. So did I. Yeah. Well, I did. I did. I'm trying to get rid of the bats in my, my attic. You know, I tried every other way, but... Alas, it comes down to gas. It always does. Always does. <laughs> well, thank you.